Okay, here's two different keyboards. Okay. Which one's quieter? Huh? Whoa! This is probably the quietest keyboard I've ever typed on. This just might be the world's quietest keyboard. No, seriously, I've done nothing to this audio. Howdy, hey, I'm Hippio Tech, and this story begins with a keyboard and ends with, uh, yeah, don't worry, we'll talk about that later. In my quest to try hundreds and hundreds of keyboards, you know what always comes up? People want keyboards that sound thocky or clacky, but what if I just want a keyboard that doesn't sound at all? Is that possible? Well, I've actually done this before, just a few years ago. Why it is keyboard? And let's just say it was way too much work. I put a whole library in there. Now, all of this got me thinking, what if I never had to build it at all? No, 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 this isn't me being depressed. This is me finding new frontiers. In this video, I'll be testing out a keyboard that is silent with literally no effort. But then what if I go to the extra mile and try and make it even more silent? What if I get a little bit unhinged and start taping it up? And what if I could make a lot of mistakes? Now you probably have a million questions. Hippio, how much is the keyboard? How does it actually sound? Does it feel good? Is it a good keyboard? Well, stick around and find out. You can also stick around that subscribe button because most of you haven't and I'm trying to hit a million. Before I begin the unhinged part of this video, let's start at the beginning. This video is sponsored by Varmilo. Varmilo? Varmilo? I don't know. However, like all of my typical keyboard videos, they did not get a chance to review this video or alter my script or uh, you'll, you'll see why they definitely didn't influence this video later. Don't worry. <laughs> now, when they told me they had a keyboard that was virtually silent, I said, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. I spent hours modding a keyboard just to make it silent. There's no way. And then they sent me two keyboards. Okay, weird, but I guess we're going to get into that later. Now, as I unbox this keyboard, you've noticed a couple things. It comes with a keycap and switch puller, which is nice, a USB-C cable, a wireless dongle, okay. Most of this is your standard run-of-the-mill stuff that you'd expect with a keyboard. But I couldn't help but think the box smelled a bit weird. Now, it was shipped very, very well, I'll give them that. And they even wrapped it in a plastic bag that I can use as a hat. Nope, that is a joke. So this is the Varmilo Menilo. God, why? Why would you call it that? It's a 75% keyboard and you're probably thinking, wow, that looks pretty nice. Or at least that's what I was thinking. Now this keyboard comes in at 136 US dollars. Now that is on the more expensive side of budget, but it's fully built, which puts it in a kind of nice price point. Maybe, if it's good, that is. Now I don't normally do this, but the keyboard kind of smells like cologne. So I had to just really get in there. <coughs> <coughs> so then I had to go show a friend. Josie, what does this smell like? Cologne? Something? Perfume? Why? <laughs> so yeah, even the brightest minds of my household couldn't figure out why it smells that way, but it actually does smell kind of nice and kind of bad at the same time. The only thing I can think of is that they're using the smell to mask the sound of the keyboard. Or something. Now, the shell is unapologetically plastic, which could be a problem later. But generally I found plastic to be decently quiet. It just depends on how it's being utilized and if there's foam in place. But looking at the bottom of this keyboard, I don't see any screws. Do you guys see any screws? Hopefully that's not gonna be an issue. Now I have the sound muted here, so no spoilers, but I couldn't help but notice that it feels incredibly smooth. Like there's something going on with these switches. They're also really pleasantly pillowy, like the color on these keycaps. The board comes with double shot PBT keycaps that have a really, really nice color scheme and they're honestly very decent. They're the type of set you'd expect to spend about 30, 40 bucks on on Amazon. These are the prestige silence switches that only come in this board and they make it very, very unique. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I haven't tried that many silent switches, but these feel different, so I'm gonna have to open them up. And uh, this was a mistake. Dear God, do not open them up. Now, with a normal mechanical switch, it makes sound as it goes down and up. And with your average silent switch, there's usually a dampener built into the stem that makes it quieter when it goes down and up. But with this one, it's a little bit different, like weird. Now, these are made by Kale, who make a lot of different switches. And the design here is very strange. Now, bear with me. There's like a little dampener bit on the bottom. There's also a weird dampener bit that connects to the piece of the stem that connects with the connector. And you know what? Let's just say the internals of these switches are very fiddly. Uh, don't take them apart, but they're really cool. Speaking of cool, my stabilizers were pre-lubed and normally these types of semi-clear stabilizers absolutely suck. Mine were really smooth, like this transition to talking about how the board is hot swap. So if you ever get tired of the quiet switches, 
you could change them out. The north facing LEDs suck, however, the provided switches don't have any interference. Like the no interference wireless modes, and the RGB if you buy the more expensive version. Oh, it's actually like only $7 more for RGB. Okay, that's actually a pretty worthwhile upgrade. Now, I didn't fully test the wireless, like the 2.4 gigahertz works, but I don't really have a Linus Tech Tips lab, so uh, yeah. Now, before I get into how this keyboard sounds and my weird plans with it, let's talk about the second keyboard that they sent me. Now, I won't spend too much time on this, I just thought it was quite interesting. With the Manilo line of keyboards, Farmilo, oh my god, that's such a mouthful. Um, they have different colors of cases and keycaps that also correspond to the different switches available. So this is the Eucalyptus version, and it comes with tactile switches. Now, these tactile switches aren't silent, but I bet a lot of you are wondering what this keyboard would sound like if you were to put normal switches in it. So this will kind of serve as an example for that. And I was actually very impressed. This keyboard ended up sounding decently clacky and pretty good overall. So I guess if you're watching this video and you saw the silent keyboard and you're like, wow, that's really cool, but I don't want it to be silent, then you can check this out with the link down below and use my code that I have in the description to use a little discount. And with that little detour out of the way, it was time to get back to my devious plans for the silent keyboard. Oh, yeah. Now, little did I know what I was about to endeavor on might have been the hardest keyboard modding project I've ever done. Well, maybe just the stupidest keyboard modding project I've ever done. To set the stage, I'll just tell you this keyboard is unapologetically silent. I will give you a quick little sound test of what it sounds like right about now. So they've absolutely nailed it. It's really quiet and I can't help but think it can't be just the switches making this this quiet, right? I need to get this thing open and figure out what's inside. And this is where the first mistake of many starts to unfold. Taking off the keycaps was incredibly easy. Easy peasy if you ever need to clean this thing, no big deal. But the issue that I started to find is that this keyboard is built never to be taken apart. Now, Varmilo's definitely seen my channel, so they definitely know I like to take keyboards apart. They didn't mention this at all. The first roadblock was this top piece of the housing that was damn near impossible to remove. It almost felt like a screw was holding it down, but why would there be a screw? There's no other way to take this thing apart, except to break it, I guess. You remember how I told you that Vermilo definitely would not have approved if they had reviewed this video? Remember that part, that part of the video? You're a maniac. Now I tried just about everything, and I've taken apart a lot of very difficult to take apart keyboards. So. With this one, I was wondering why there was some middle pressure point that I had to snap off just to get this keyboard open. Like, is this top housing just frail? Is it flimsy? Is it a screw? Anyways, I had to do the same thing to the bottom. Well, not break it. And if I had one of those pick removers, this job might have been a little bit easier, but my tweezers seem to work pretty well for removing the bottom. Now maybe you're thinking, oh, Hippo, you should have removed the bottom first. Nope, that wouldn't have worked. But you know what does work? these gaskets. I was really shocked to see that this plastic keyboard was gasket mounted, and I definitely felt it when I was typing, but wow, these are really, really nice. It's actually the in-between plate and PCB foam that wraps around and kind of cups the plate like a little gasket. This dampens the whole entire keyboard and actually I think is pretty integral to why it ends up sounding so quiet. You end up with a lot less reverberations when the whole entire thing is being silicone dampened. So massive props for that, but I couldn't help but wish that the case was easier to take apart. Like, seriously, guys. Also, after looking at the inside, my thoughts were confirmed. They did add a nice sheet of rubber on the bottom. And this has been like shape form to fill the little cutouts in the case. And you can also see the batteries which are powering this thing to be wireless. But why couldn't I get it apart earlier? There's no way they screwed that in. No way! Why would they do that? Yeah, so for some ungodly reason, they screwed the top part of the housing into the plate and PCB assembly. Literally stupid. But you know what's not stupid? The fact that I'm gonna be modding this with the tape mod. Now, I said I could get it quieter, so I'm gonna try my best with the tape mod. There honestly wasn't that much I could do to the case, but the tape mod tends to make a board sound a little bit deeper and a little bit poppier, so I'm thinking it might work pretty well here. I put three layers of tape on the back of the PCB and then flattened it out really nice like that. When it comes to improving keyboard sound, this is definitely one of the most simple yet also most effective mods. Now, at this point, you're probably like, Hippio, you basically broke the keyboard. Is is the keyboard itself even gonna work? Well, don't worry, I have my good friend, name of Super Glue, and I'm just gonna pretend that this never happened. So Super Glue, 
And look, see, no scuffs. There's not a single scuff. Wait, why did you cut to the shot showing the scuffs? Jerry, what the? Anyways, after having a week with this thing and tearing it down, literally, I do think it's a fantastic option if you want a silent keyboard that you will never mod because you can't. The gasket mount is pretty nice. The case is a decent quality. The switches feel smooth. The keycaps look great. There's really not a lot going wrong here, except the case mod ability. So if you're one of those people that watches my videos and sees me modding a keyboard and goes, wow, that guy's stupid. Why is he doing that? Um, first of all, why are you watching my videos? But second of all, then this might be the world's quietest keyboard that you don't have to mod. Now I'll be leaving you with a little bit of sound tests. I'm gonna give you a sound test of the before, the after, and also I'll be comparing it to the eucalyptus and then just a random louder keyboard that I had laying around my room at the time. Please watch the whole sound test to support my YouTube algorithm overlords and leave a comment with your favorite kind of ice cream. Double points if you're lactose intolerant. This is the quietest keyword ever. <laughs> <laughs> totally not being held at gunpoint. <laughs>